Welcome everyone to another dose of Lectio Divina Quotidie, daily Lectio Divina, daily divine reading of the Holy Word of God. Uh, today's readings are from uh, Ascension Thursday, the Solemnity of the Ascension of Our Lord Jesus Christ to Heaven. So as you can see, I'm on a pretty uh, tight budget. I don't have anything fancy going on here. It's just my phone and my voice uh, because I really don't have the time to do anything to um, overproduced, maybe in the future if, if this takes off, but th the whole point is just to informally uh, share the Word of God with my subscribers or anyone who happens to stumble upon these videos and hope that somehow uh, the Holy Spirit speak to to you or to anyone watching this video um, in in his or her own, in, 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 to speak in a unique way to each person viewing this video. Alright, so let's just jump into the first reading. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he, after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deo gratias. Let's respond with the holy word of God by praying this psalm. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts His throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts His, God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts His throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Second reading. This is one of my favorite readings. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory of his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things beneath his feet. He put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Okay, so I'll skip the shorter reading and just keep the longer one. You're more than welcome to read the other uh, versions of the readings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always, until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the Gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, um, thanks to uh, someone who suggested that I not scroll so fast when sharing the reading, so I'll make sure that whatever reading I'm talking about happens to appear on the screen. I do apologize for my uh, erratic scrolling. Um, I'm still getting used to doing this. Okay, so we could talk for three hours just about th these readings. So I'm going to, I'm just going to try to uh, skip over to the meditation aspect of Letzio Divina and ask you to look into your heart and ask yourself, after pondering these readings, which, which readings, which verses, which words spoke to you individually. Okay. Ask the Holy Spirit to invite to ask, invite the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, open your heart to what Jesus is trying to tell you right now in this text. Whether it's in the first reading, or in the second reading, or in the third reading, uh, or, or in the psalm. Uh, as for me, I, I spent a good deal of time meditating on this. I thought that I would, um, the, I would share a, an excerpt from one of the greatest teachers um, of the 17th century, one of the greatest priests of that era, um, a leader of what is known of, as uh, the French school of spirituality. His name was uh, Jean-Jacques Olier, Father Olier. He founded an order of priests um, whose charism was or is to form priests according to the heart of Christ. They have a very powerful charism. Um, you don't really see them much because they're usually in seminaries. Uh, so if you if you if you met a really good priest, most likely they were formed by one of the Sulpician fathers. My spiritual director for two years was a Sulpician father, and I I, I treasure every moment that I had. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll open up that excerpt right now, and I invite you to read these readings at least three times. Um, I'll post the actual uh, readings uh, down in the description below, so you can uh, look them up. The chapters and verses, I mean. So. This is the excerpt from his Father Olier's Catechism of the Interior Life. It's one of the few works you can find in English by him because they're usually in French. Um, and he meditates on what he calls the, the main mysteries of Christ, uh, the, the most significant mysteries of Christ. And that would be, according to Olier, the um, incarnation, the uh, death of Christ, or the, the um, crucifixion of Christ, the death of Christ, I mean, the, uh, in, in de Christ in the sepulcher or in the tomb, um, the resurrection of Christ, and then the ascension of Christ. Right now, we're going to look at what he has to say about the ascension because it speaks volumes. And for me, it summarizes what it all means for us. And like a good catechism, it's written in uh, Q&A format. So it says, um, of the mystery of the ascension of our Lord, and of its, of its grace and state, which is that of the perfect. What is then the grace and state of the mystery of the ascension? The answer, it is a state of perfect transformation into God, a state of triumph and glory, a state in which nothing infirm any longer appears. In other words, whatever makes human life miserable, it's gone. Whatever, 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 uh, Whatever part of Jesus' humanity experienced pain was gone. Did any infirmity appear in our Lord after his resurrection? He still had, he had still some marks of it. Make sure everybody can see that. 
top of the page there, and seemed occasionally to despoil himself of the perfect glory of his consummation in God and of his total resemblance with his Father. He still rendered his humanity occasionally palpable and visible to the eyes of his apostles. In other words, he was able to make his humanity visible and of course he still bears the wounds of his crucifixion for um, for his own purposes he would still eat with them you know Jesus was able to walk through the walls walk through walls and consume food at the same time great mystery but after the day of his ascension pay attention here after the day of his ascension his glory no longer suffered any interruption or suspension the sight of it was no longer supportable to the eyes of men. Having entered into the splendor of God his Father, he now lives hidden in his bosom and no longer falls under our senses. And although he still preserves the qualities of human nature, he does not subject them any longer to our infirmities. So the days of Jesus' physical suffering, as he did in his humanity, are gone. This has a lot to do with us and what, what awaits us. He has become a vivifying spirit, having perfectly entered into a participation of the nature of his Father, glorious, spiritual, all-powerful, so that he even sends with him his Holy Spirit and participates in the fecundity of the Father to communicate his sp the Spirit without. Let's read that again. He has become a vivifying spirit, having perfectly entered into a participation of the nature of his Father, glorious, spiritual, all-powerful, so that he even sends with him his Holy Spirit and participates in the, in the fecundity of the Father to communicate his Spirit without. For as the Eternal Word, infinitely one with his Father, by an interior and identical principle, produces the Holy Ghost with him and in him, so Jesus Christ our Lord, who is exterior to God by his human nature, in uniting himself to him and entering into perfect unity with him, produces the Holy Ghost whom he sends with him to his apostles. He enters into him and produces the Holy Ghost whom he sends with him to his apostles. And in this consists the admirable wonder of the mystery of the ascension. Hence, at the time when a soul enters into this in the state of the, the at the time when a soul enters in the state of the divine ascension of our Lord, it receives the participation of his divinity, as the church sings after the holy apostle who says that we are made partakers of the divine nature. That's in the Divine Consortis Naturae. That's from um, the letter of St. Peter. Okay. A truly wonderful state. See that right there, page 142. A truly wonderful state of the soul rendered interiorly conformable and wholly similar to God and as the saints say, perfectly deiform. That is all glowing with love and luminous with the splendor of God. The soul in this state does not fall any longer from its union with God to descend to the wretched condition of human infirmity. It no longer yields to passion or self-love, no longer allows itself to be transformed into the creature, no longer permits in itself the love of perishable things, which makes one see himself in them and them in him, and thus causes him to lose the perfect resemblance with God and his adorable Son ascended into heaven. Here we are where being now himself transformed and consummated in his Father, he draws us gently to the same transformation and consummation. In a nutshell, he, Jesus, draws us gently to the same transformation and consummation. It is for this reason that he said to Magdalene, Do not touch me, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Wait until I am in that state in which I will draw souls to my Father and to the, and to the transformation into him. This is what he does in the most holy sacrament of the altar, in which, having entered in, into his power, he transforms souls into himself. You will not change me into you, but you will be changed into me. The soul in the state of resurrection ought to fear the attachment and even the approach of creatures. 
for fear of being transformed into them and becoming a partaker of their vile being. Olier was not one to mince his words. Too bad we don't have teachers like this now. The state of the Holy Ascension, then, is the state of the perfect. I'm sorry, let me ask that with the, with the right inflection. The state of the, of the Holy Ascension, then, is then the state of the, the perfect? Yes, it is the state of souls that are already perfect and anteriorly transformed into God, into whose being and life they have passed by virtue of a perfect and most intimate union. How truly admirable this union is. Yes, it is for this reason that the ascension of our Lord is called admirable, and that it makes souls enter a state of enter in, enter into a state of ineffable sanctity. Tell me something more of it to make me still more desirous of attaining it. The soul in this state is impenetrable, impenetrable to the attacks of the world. It is no longer susceptible to the imperfection of creatures. It is entirely separated from the, the profane being. Next page. It possesses a divine peace and repose, and is immovable in its interior. To a soul in this state we may safely apply these words. There shall, there shall no evil come to thee, nor shall the scourge come near thy dwelling. That's from the Psalms. Non accedit ad malum et flagellum non, non apropinquabit tabernaculo tuo. That's at the bottom, Psalm. Um, yeah. This state is one of admirable purity, one in which the soul has no longer any union with profane things. It sees its old man and its flesh change and alter, but always intimate and interior with itself. It does not fall from its union with God, it remains firm and constantly makes new progress, as it is only in its flesh that there is any alteration. Isn't that powerful? So let me go back to the reading here. If you look at what happens in the um, second reading, he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body. So if we are his body, that means we're not separated from him. That means that he is the fullness. He is the fullness of one who fills all things in every way. So Christ, when he ascended, he was assuming his role as high priest of heaven, the heavenly tabernacle, the one not made by human hands. And he sent us and sends us the Holy Spirit from the heavenly Jerusalem. Christ ascended into heaven the same way the great high priest would ascend to the Holy of Holies. It's powerful. And to think that we, in this state, by the Holy Spirit that is given to us at baptism and, 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 and engendered within us through the sacrament of confirmation and continued through a life of faith, a life of devotion and prayer, we too can live in this state of divine nature. I can't say I'm quite there. I think I, there's a lot of me that's still very much attached to the old man. But I, I, my prayer is that you and, and I can, can overcome our weaknesses through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's really quite easy. It's simply just believing, believing the gospel and following through, through obedience to the commandments constantly turning our minds and hearts to the risen Lord for help. So thank you for joining me in this reading and this Lectio Divina, and I hope to see you next time. Please post comments below of ways you think I can make this better. Do you prefer to see me actually uh, sitting down and, and reading this to you from a, a physical Bible, or uh, do you like just having it on the screen like this? So I thought about making it more personal by just, you know, videotaping myself or video recording myself with a Bible in my room, uh, so there's that face-to-face -face sort of uh, effect, but um, I don't want to slip into vanity and think that that's necessary, so I'm just letting you see the word for itself, and um, if you're interested in looking up more on uh, Jean-Jacques Ollier, he's very, this, um, this particular book is fairly easy to find. If anyone wants a copy of it, uh, just post me a comment below, and I'll be happy to share a link with you. Uh, it really is a spiritual classic that not too many people are aware of. It's a good 239 pages of pure gold. So, 
Thank you for joining me today. God bless.